Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mentoring as a Culture podcast. What this podcast aims to achieve is to showcase, explore, and deep dive into the building blocks of mentorship. And we've got a whole series lined up, and this is one of the episodes, and thanks so much for joining us. So uh, here we have, of course, joining us for the podcast, as always, is Lawrence and myself. And today we have Marda. And the theme for today's podcast is mentoring success. Marda is going to give tips, stories, and also ideas about how to make it a real success for each one of you. Before you even start measuring the success of the mentorship, don't you even have to have a roadmap or framework of sorts? Is Mm -hmm. there something that you actually subscribe to? Yeah, of course. Um, Mentoring should have a structure because uh, we cannot just do mentoring just like that, you know, without any uh, guidance at all. So um, as per my experience for working for more than 30 years and really mentoring a lot of people, it should really start with something like, for example, a goal. You know, uh, there should be an agreement and then uh, choosing mentors. There should be a matching of of, uh, personalities and also chemistry and uh, there should be trust. So it really uh, revolves around um, the personalities of the mentor and the mentee and the acceptance of both that they will be doing that, uh, that process. Because at the end of the day, it becomes a relationship. And uh, that relationship will not just uh, uh, stop after that. Most of the mentors that I have seen um, actually continue to uh, mentor uh, their mentees even beyond the the corporate life. After that, of course, um, uh, there would be an agreement in terms of timing, scheduling, how they would really proceed. And then the measurements is what you were uh, talking about, you know, how we measure the success, which would come later. Right. But before all of this, I mean, you have a very long standing relationship with mentorship. I mean, uh, I I just want to, if you don't mind, uh, for the benefit of the audience, Mm -hmm. right, who hasn't seen you on LinkedIn yet, who hasn't followed you (laughs) on LinkedIn yet, you have a very, very long um, history in the corporate world. Yes. Right. And um, do you, I mean, take us back a little bit. When do you think um, this could have been maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, in fact, that you had your first stint with mentoring? Actually, it was more than 20 years ago, um, even when I started in the Philippines uh, as an HR director of um, uh, BOC Gases, you know, the company that I worked with, um, because we talked about mentoring a lot. And as what you said, uh, Lawrence, you know, mentoring is a culture. We really want to uh, really embrace that culture. So what happened was uh, when we started talking about it as an um, emerging professional, <laughs> you know, at that point in time, I read a lot of uh, tips, you know, on how I could do it better. And I realized that um, it's really uh, about passion and really about uh, helping a mentee or an individual uh, to achieve his goal or her goal. Um, so that's how it started. But then I, I was moved to uh, Singapore and I was given this um, uh, role to uh, lead and manage um management trainee program. At one point in time, I have uh, 30 management trainees coming from different countries, but all of them have masters or um, MBA degrees because they are really management trainees. We're really moving them up. We assigned mentors to each of them, but because I am the program lead for that, by default, I became the uh, complimentary mentor to this uh, young young uh, individuals, just uh, fresh graduates, but uh, you know, uh, with the uh, masters and MBA. So um, that's when I realized that um, it's a lot of work, but it's an enjoyable thing. I mean, you know, um, I learned a lot from from that process, and uh, from that start. I did not leave mentoring at all. So it became automatic and it became a part of my my uh, profession, mm. I should say, yeah. Mm. You know, I, I like working backwards, right? And I was thinking, right, how do you define mentoring success for, say, let's take, for example, an individual in that management training mm. program that you had 20 years ago. Yep. What was mentoring success for that person mm-hmm that you actually felt really good about? Maybe you can share that as a story for us. Oh, okay. A lot of uh, stories. Um, Well, I will pick up some. Um, Well, first and foremost, uh, I shall say that mentoring success is when uh, the mentor would see that the mentee became successful. You know, I I was talking about a goal 
of mentoring. When you saw that the mentee actually achieved that goal and even went, you know, ahead beyond that much more, it means that um, the mentoring is successful. Second, when you can see that the mentee really acknowledged that because of that mentoring that uh, he has, he became successful, mm. that is really something, you know, as a mentor, you will, you will be very happy uh, hearing that. I will tell you one story. Um, just yesterday, I had the phone call with one HR director in the Philippines that I actually uh, mentored, um, yeah, about uh, 20 years ago. And he introduced me to his training and development um, manager as, uh, this is Miss Marda, and he was my mentor before. I learned a lot from her. And, you know, during that time, um, he was working as a, a training and development uh, manager, but now he himself is an HR director in a big uh, company. So for me being introduced like that, I, I really felt that it is, uh, you know, a successful mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that um, when you see that uh, your mentor, uh, mentees actually uh, became uh, something, you know, uh, very, um, I mean, like a leader or a CEO in that company that they are working with, even though they left the company where you met them before, that's really a, a good thing. And if they would never um, lose contact with you, I mean, that, that's really something. And they will tell you that, hey, I appreciate this, I appreciate this appreciate that. Do you think that uh, uh, it sounds like mentors and mentees end up becoming friends? Yeah, because, you know, for a passionate mentor, he or she should look beyond the individual. In the process of mentoring, uh, there could be some cases wherein, especially if you are uh, talking about bringing the mentee from A to B, mm -hmm. there will be a lot of discussions about issues. And the issues may not be only at the workplace. It may be issues outside of the workplace. And if that's the case, you need to do something about it. Hmm. He is looking at you as uh, somebody who's, um, you know, um, very experienced, somebody that um, they, they could trust, you know, they could share, they could share some things. If you are an effective mentor, you need to say something about mm -hmm. it. And right. you, you, need, you need to think that, okay, this is what I would say or this is what I would do if I were in that situation that he's talking to me mm -hmm. about. So that's the reason why by default and unavoidably, that relationship would grow mm. even beyond the corporate uh, mentoring. Right, yeah. right. Lawrence, I wanted to get your take on this, right? Um, many a times, uh, I think in, in many organizations, they go, okay, this is business mentorship or this is our corporate mentorship and this is what we do for you specifically for the vertical of function that you do. Mm. But yet what Mada is talking about is completely different whereby, okay, maybe I'm opening up Pandora's box here, which means that it's no longer just this thing, that this, this one channel or this vertical yeah. or function that you focus on, but now the mentor can also level up and go into someone's life, personal advice. Uh, tell me a little bit more about perhaps how many facets of mentorship there is? You know, one of the key things that you correctly called out, right, is the fact that mentoring is like coaching, but it is more than coaching. Yeah. It's actually, and Mother alludes to it, about it being more holistic yep. in terms of how we develop a person. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not just talking about a function or a specialization or, yep. or a skill. We're actually talking about the development, the growth and development of the person yep. mm -hmm. in all spaces that he needs to be growing. Yep. And that's the beauty of mentoring. Mm -hmm. And that's why we advocate mentoring much further or much wider than coaching yep. itself. Because coaching is just one piece of it. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of benefits. And this is a question that I think Martha would be able to answer because she was sharing a lot of success stories around the mentoring that she's done. But what is what was calling out to me to ask was actually the benefits that every person who goes through mentoring gathers. Mm. And it's not just tangibles, but it's also the intangibles. Of course. So, Martha, maybe you can share with us some of the tangibles that you have experienced mm -hmm. for them with them and some of the intangibles mm -hmm. that actually comes out from mentoring because 
um, like like what you have gone through, right? The management trainees. I've had management trainees. I did the same as well yeah. with uh-huh. Asia Pacific breweries. And one of the things that I realize now is that people actually come back to you yeah, of course. and tell you, hey, listen, what you told me last time, the simple advice that you gave or the simple sharing that you gave during our mentoring sessions, it sort of worked for me and now I'm living it. Yeah. So maybe you want to share some of these benefits that men- the mentors that have gone through your passage, your journeys right, with you. Um, maybe you want to share some of the tangibles and okay. intangible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, tangible. Um, I actually mentored somebody um, who at that stage was an underperformer. And the reason why they uh, appointed me, appointed, you know, they called me as a mentor. Appointed, huh? Yeah. So that's how it is, right? It's chucked into your lap and you go, all right, you're a mentor now. No, no, it's because I know the, the guy. I, I know that person. And I know that he has been a very uh, good performer. And they know that as well. So they want to save him. Why, mm. why is it and what's happening that he is underperforming now? And they did not wait that the person would really be a failure. Right, for, Immediately they for this it. anecdote, would you be able to tell us about which areas specifically? I mean, again, no names have to be mentioned. Perhaps mm-hmm. this person may be fictional uh, yeah. for legal no, purposes. No, it's not. It's not okay. fiction. But uh, I will not mention the name. Okay. okay. Um, let's say it's Tony. Just say it's Tony. Okay, so let's say it's Unless Tony. Unless his name is really Tony. No, not okay, actually. Okay, so that's, then it's Tony then. Okay. It's a girl. No, no. It could be t- Tony with an I. That's a, that's a girl. So it's yeah. ambiguous. Okay. Smart. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Tony okay. uh, actually has been uh, seen to be underperforming and the company would like to save him because uh, he has been uh, performing very well. So I was called and then I, I need to mentor him. I know that the issue is about productivity and I mentored him for uh, three, four months. And that's what I was uh, saying, you know, if the person would voluntarily tell you what the issues are, you don't have a choice, especially if you are appointed as a mentor. You really need to listen. Hmm. You really need to um, give advice up to the extent that, um, you know, your experience could actually relate or, you know, what, what you could advise to him. And I found out that there was an issue at home. So um, even though it's a corporate coaching, uh, mentoring, I cannot do something about it. I need to really advise the person. Um, he's married. I'm also married, so at least we could share, you know, that uh, you know the the ups and downs of marriage. So um, after the uh, mentoring process, what happened was on the ninth month when they were doing the awarding, he was awarded as one of the best performers in Southeast Asia. Wow! And uh, that one was really very tangible for me. Um, I don't remember the numbers, but. I tell you that one was really, you know, it really resonates to me as really one example of tangible success. And um, the person really acknowledged that, yeah, it's because of the uh, mentoring that Marda did that when I was losing focus, hey, there she is giving me focus on what Mm. I need to do and uh, really guiding me. And there are lots of things that um, has been um, disturbing him, but yeah, I just tell him, no, focus on this, do this, talk to your wife, this and that, and that's it. Right. So yeah. it, it's very interesting that you brought this up because it seems like the <clears throat> lack of productivity actually stemmed from... Um, Some issues so, outside, uh, outside of the, of, yeah, yeah, so outside of the workplace. So And, and, and that, he cannot share that with anybody. You and, know? and that's the thing. It's almost intangible if you think about it, right? It's intangible, but it became tangible yes. in a sense because of the performance that uh, you know yeah. that he had uh, given after that right. because he was able to focus. Yeah. So, so that's that's something I actually wanted to um, get into, which was many a times. I, I mean, even in my own corporate um, background, when we had things like coaching, mentoring, or whatever it is, there was always something that had to be tangible. But yeah, yet, of course. but yet on the the other side of it, sometimes you hear from certain people, be it up the up the ladder or down the grapevine, they actually say that, ah, oh, you know, doing all of this, what's the point? There's no numbers mm-hmm. that you can put. It's just a feel good kind of thing, you know? No, not actually. I don't believe that. Because um, you know, I will share with you, we had the same experience, uh, Lawrence, that um, we worked and led, led a management training program, right? If we had seen that the management trainee is being appointed into a project and that project became successful, the person actually contributed a lot to that project. That is actually a tangible, tangible uh, thing. You know, they cannot say that it is not tangible. 
because they were able to deliver the project, they were able to uh, um, add, uh, you know, uh, some benefits to the company. That's tangible. Yeah. It really just depends on how the leader would look at it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because some of the intangibles, uh, uh, the guy becomes a better person. Mm. For example, that's right. Yeah. Um, the way he treats other people because mm-hmm. he's been through a culture. Yep. Of mentoring, where somebody always supporting and mm. helping him, mm. it sort of creates an environment where he becomes a better person. Of course, and he is now being more considerate about how mm-hmm. he talks, how he asks questions, how he supports people, how he collaborates with people mm-hmm. to make it work in the workplace yep. in the business. So those are really good points uh, that we're talking about, and I, I think that is one of the pieces that we don't we don't just measure the individual but we measure how the success cascades across Mm -hmm. the whole environment that he is involved in yep i think that's one of the more important pieces that um i think you know you're talking about and edric's also Mm -hmm. adding on to it Uh, but edric brings up a good point as well because in mentoring success itself there are also the naysayers the guys who say hey listen i don't need to waste my time on this Mm -hmm. Um, how then would you work it to make them really understand that it is a lesson? It's an added piece to your armory mm-hmm. that you can grow and develop to become much better than what you are now, just through mentoring, support, and a system where there are people around you that will help you grow and develop to your fullest potential. Okay, uh, first and foremost, I shall say that. Before embarking on a mentoring process, the person should be open-minded and should have already accepted that he is going to be mentored. Because um, if he doesn't have that acceptance in his mind, then it will not work. Because whatever you're going to talk about, all the conversations that uh, you're going to uh, have with him, he would have a closed mind and he would not accept it. So the first thing that the mentor should do is really to open the mind of the mentee and have that acceptance at the start. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And I think that is the crux of it, right? Because we talk about success, right? But beyond, Mm -hmm. success is a point in time. That's right. But there are other things that are happening before that happens. And and everybody's got to be along that same journey. That's right. So it's great that you're bringing this up because in mentoring, right? Um, The the best form of mentoring in my mind, this is my personal opinion, Mm -hmm. Is actually informal. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. No, and but, but then, in the community that we're in right now, everybody's doing mentoring. <laughs> Everybody, and if you do it wrong, you actually end up destroying, mm-hmm. rather than creating. So how do we, mother, in your mind, right, going through all the thirty years of experience of mentoring and being touched and so believing in it totally what is the one key factor that is so critical right to make sure that we have the mentoring prepared with the right skills and competencies how do we do that mentor mentor relationship of course the mentor um, should be somebody who would be qualified would be knowledgeable about the things that he would um, mentor you know, the mentee about um, so that he could get the respect and the trust. Because if the mentee would have in his mind, that even at the start, that why am I appointed this mentor? You know, he or she doesn't know anything about this. So uh, there should be that trust that the mentor can actually uh, help help the mentee, you know, really move to the next level. That trust should really uh, be there. So, and there's also the chemistry and the, uh, acceptance of the the process like you know there should be timing there should be schedule uh, because both of them are working and they are both busy um, so those things should work most critical I think is really the trust and the mm. respect you know um, mm. between each other right yeah. you, you know going back to one of the points that you brought up just now which was getting people to open up whether they are willing to receive mm. that mentoring. Right now, we're talking about very high-level stuff. Yep. I'd like to go down to the nitty-gritty, which mm-hmm. is what were, in your opinion, more of the common points of resistance that you got and how did you overcome them? Okay, number one resistance that I had seen is you know the question in the mind of the mentee that 
Why am I being mentored? Why am I in this program? So there's this defensiveness, right? Yeah, that defensiveness because they would think that I'm I'm not performing. Maybe that's the reason why. Because they're afraid that they'll be sacked. N- no, I'm they, not good enough. What, what's the? Yeah, m- maybe yeah. That, that's one. Um, and uh, they're thinking that maybe this is the last uh, last leg of my journey in this company. They're just trying to save me, you know. Um, so it's either I make it or break it. But actually, the mentor, especially if it is in a corporate mentoring, the mentor should know why is it happening? No, why, why, are, why are we doing this? So there should be a brief between the CEO or the leader of the company and the mentor about what's going to be achieved. That's, that, that brief is really very important. That's interesting because yeah. I've never heard of that before. Most of the time, right, it's just like, hey, this person has a problem. Go, no. go fix Tony. I would always request for that meeting and really uh, get a schedule with the CEO that, you know, we need to be sure of why this is being done. I need to know. And then afterwards, I would request a meeting with the mentee together with him so that the CEO would actually sponsor what is happening. Wow, that's a very interesting mentorship culture. I've never, I've never that, experienced that's why that before. Beca- that's why it becomes a culture because, you know, it starts from the sponsorship of the CEO. So if the CEO will not show visible leadership, you know, in, in this program, of course, everybody will not show any interest in this. They right. would not believe it. There should be visible leadership and there should be a sponsor from the top that this is very important. This is the culture that we're going to implement. This is the, the culture that I want to have. Hey, you know, let's embrace it. No, really interesting because um, in the organizations I've worked with, mm-hmm. actually mentoring is exclusive. Um, not because we don't want to do it across, because it takes a lot of effort and time. Yeah. And, and what we use it for is to drive the top high potential Echelon yeah. mm-hmm. towards success. And then people get very envious. But it's a <laughs> good thing to have because people yeah. want to be mentored. <laughs> they aspire to be mentored because they know how effective it is. So I think we, we want to be able to sort of have mentoring as a culture mm-hmm. cut across, uh, not just on an informal basis. The reason why I ask you about the skills and competencies requirement is because I think at the end of the day, we do a lot of mentoring, but we need to make sure that the people we send out there to look after other people, first of all, they need to be aware of who they are. Secondly, they need to be, it's like like every other job that you do. Mm -hmm. You need to be skilled, at least a basic amount to go out there to mentor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you could be destroying lives because you're, you're actually touching on very... Uh, sensitive points mm-hmm. in development of a person. It's interesting as so that you should talk about CEOs and all that because one of the key things that mentoring is about is not just for mentees. Of course. Because the mentors actually benefit as much as the mentees in the process. Mm-hmm. And also, likewise, the leaders and the business and the organizations. Yep. So I want to ask you, right, How can a leader benefit because the culture has been embedded inside the organization? Mm -hmm. Because uh, mentoring cuts across. Let's say he's here as a team where he has mentors and mentees actually embedded inside. Mm -hmm. How how do you think he would have benefited from this process? I think in terms of teamwork or the productivity of the team, you know, they become uh, close to each other. And... Aside from that, um, a leader, I think, is an excellent uh, leader if he is open-minded himself. Um, And he accepts that uh, there are limitations in any individual's uh, skills and, uh, I mean, you know, capabilities. And if a leader, you know, even though he's a CEO, is open-minded enough to accept that, and take the chance to accept, you know, the mentoring, peer-to-peer mentoring, or you know, the the um, casual mentoring of uh, you know from the peers. Then it means that um, he has humility. Hmm. It means that uh, he is accepting that uh, he could really benefit from the from the other people's ideas, 
and they could actually share with each other you know um i had seen um one ceo of um uh really a conglomerate a big conglomerate who actually has a team of what he call consultant mentors for him in that sense um i know i was really thinking oh this guy i really appreciate him so much because uh he accepts with humility his gaps you know what are the things that he needs to uh still learn and for whatever reason he would just uh call the consultant uh mentor and just pick up the phone and then call him or her and then ask for some opinion and then they would discuss at least he would know that um he is not alone in the journey because you know being a ceo can be very lonely yes and having a circle of mentors even though you are a ceo or a business owner well that that is really something so yeah, yeah. no I, i i definitely concur with what you said because i've seen it happen where leaders have actually benefited tremendously mm-hmm. from people just being i mean true mentoring right just being more open yeah more connected mm mm-hmm. more collaborative yep. more engaged yeah. more more communicative yes, around the things the they do the engagement and uh, being uh, yeah. you know and and so so open. it makes it makes it fun mm. to actually be in that environment to work in that's the culture that we're looking for exactly really. that's that's when and the that, mentoring really, becomes a culture yeah that's really good because because it also now moves me to the next question i have because You know when we build mentoring as a culture in any organization or we're trying to build it we also bring the values right so how does the business and organization benefit from mentoring success of the of the workforce in that organization because i think that is the bigger piece that's where the culture really brightens up even much more yeah actually um the company or the organization will benefit a lot from mentoring if they would uh, be able to uh, see that the culture is already embraced by the organization in a sense that everybody's open about it everybody's talking about it everybody has a hunger to have a mentor you know and sometimes they would even request for that and yeah. um, so as what you said you know people are engaged they are happy and uh they would even share it to each other you know oh, hey you know my my mentor shared uh you know to me this one and i think i could share this to you there could be a, a sort of um inter dependent sharing of uh experience and that becomes a culture you know in mm-hmm. that sense that, any company who would have that would surely benefit you know mm-hmm. it could be an uh you know an intangible benefit but it would just come out and it would be seen by the people not only inside but outside the organization the customers um yeah. um even the productivity will be up the share price will go up you know all of those things uh that that could happen actually it could also help in employer branding because you know most of the uh mm-hmm. candidates right now are actually asking hey would this be available in in your company exactly yeah, yeah. so um at what level do you think that people start asking for that in your experience if a person is ambitious i think they would at the start they would already have an open mind about hey who can help me the the candidate if he enters the organization um a good uh company with a mentoring culture would already think about how uh this person could benefit in a body body system they call it but it's actually a form of mentoring actually of that the person will not be just left out there should be somebody who would actually guide the person on the uh you know unwritten rules how he can be more effective how he could deal with this person that leader that department you know and this and that that is a form of mentoring right and that could start even at the onboarding stage mm-hmm. you know it's interesting because having read a lot of stuff about future of work right mm-hmm. i think a lot of the younger demographics the younger generation they're starting to look at pieces like that right yeah. to actually develop and they're talking about balance and they're talking about support they want to do things easier yep. don't have to reinvent the yep. wheel yeah. so they they use these mentoring elements right mm-hmm. to help them get there so a lot of it is about you know like you said right when people come looking for jobs now 
they actually look out to see whether you have that system in yeah. place in the organizations, right? And yet, I find that organizations do not totally embrace it. Why do you think that's the case? Perhaps the leader does not support, you know, because it's really very tough for HR or for the leadership team to be able to implement that uh, that program or that uh, that culture if there is no sponsorship from the top. Number one really is sponsorship from the top. The, the leader should actually believe in what they are doing in terms of mentoring. Because I'm sure if the, the leader would um, actually um, articulate that, that, hey, you know, we need to guide our new hires, we need to uh, help them, and let's identify the high potential, and we can do that only if we are closer to them, this and that. That would actually uh, be in the minds of those direct reports and the next uh, level below. And that would actually trickle down the organization. Eventually, if everybody would be interested because the CEO had started it, it becomes a culture eventually because everybody would think that um, this is something important, especially if HR would include uh, that uh, mentoring piece into the performance management. Yeah, I, yeah. I, interesting you should say yeah. that because in terms of success, right, for business and organizations, uh, when I was working in my last MNC, what happened was I was measured by the percentage of revenue growth mm. for putting in the mentoring system. And it was, and luckily for me, over the three years that we did it, we initiated it, it was double digit growth. Wow. So yeah, you have been for, successful. Yeah, six to 12% mm. it was. So I think one of the key factors that needs to be actually embedded is that we need to have metrics measurement mm -hmm. to see the success of it. But having said that, right, currently, right, in a research that was recently just passed up by the Singapore Business Federation, what is said that what the three core challenges mm -hmm. of organizations are increasing costs. Yeah. Second one, manpower. Yeah. And the third one is business continuity and survival. Mm -hmm. In this order, right? 67, 97 for manpower and 66 mm -hmm. for survival. Mm -hmm. So these are factors that probably drive them to think, right? A hey, mentoring is going to cost me. So how am I going to stop the increasing cost of running a business and address the mentoring, the manpower issue mm -hmm. or keeping our people and developing them correctly. And make sure that I am still surviving and driving revenue. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's your thought on that one? Well, I don't like to throw these spanners, <laughs> right? But they're, they're real, that's reality. That's what, that's what organizations are facing right now. So how do we address that? How do we help them overcome that? It's quite tough. When I saw that um, survey, the result of the survey, I thought, wow, this high? I really couldn't believe it, but because it is a result of a survey, um, I, I think it's, uh, you know, really an eye-opener. Having that uh, big percentage in terms of manpower, 97% as what you said, it means that, you know, it's very tough to uh, uh, recruit yeah. now. It's very tough to find the right talents that you need who would actually uh, help your business grow. And it's very tough to retain them because you are not just competing in the market, but you are competing for talents now. That's why it became uh, 97%. That's what I understood. So um, I think everything should really start from the onboarding process is what I have said uh, to help the manpower stay because when they applied, to the organization and then you accept them, it means that there's already a meeting of minds that, hey, I'm coming to you as a company because I know or I think, I believe that you are the right company for mm. me. Then the company, the organization should really do everything to show that mm. that uh, candidate that he is right, you know? Um, so many things, it's not only rewards, especially the young people now, they're not only looking at money. Uh, they're looking at so many things like, you know, how you implement diversity, inclusion, sustainability, mentoring process, and all of those things. Then um, to, to uh, really retain them, you need to 
introduce a lot of programs and mentoring is one of the, one of those I programs totally yeah agree. right yeah. on your end right do you actually kind of subscribe to a certain mentorship or mentoring framework that you bring with you wherever you go so that you can measure again the success of not just the mentee but your own mentoring what i do is mix and match what mm. really works um I don't just subscribe to just one framework, especially if I had seen that, hey, this other framework may work. And that's when uh, the elements of, you know, the nationality, the gender, all of those things uh, could come into play. Because when you find a framework that may work in the US, mm -hmm. it may not be the same framework that will work in the Philippines right. because of the values that are actually driving the, the people, you know, how they grew up two countries which are you know very different in values you know especially in the family right. so um you would need to learn as a mentor to really mix and match mm -hmm. depending on the personality and the you know the demographics of your mentees i mean right. you know you need to do that yeah it's interesting because we're going to be talking about east and west philosophy oh uh, yeah and as I, well. I i think that and is I a think very that's good a uh, very topic. key point yeah. in what you're discussing but we won't go into that of course yeah. because <laughs> today is about mentoring yeah. success yeah, yeah. So and how do you measure your mentoring success? My mentoring success, um, as long as I had seen that my mentees are successful, I was able to guide them into the goal that uh, we agreed that they would reach. Mm. And I had seen that they had reached that right. and even went beyond. When I actually uh, see the tangible benefits that it has brought to the company, whatever computation is that, which is quite tough to discuss here, um, and um, whenever they come back to me, as what you said, you know, after many years and introduce you as, hey, this is my mentor uh, before. And I had gained a lot from her mentorship. Mm -hmm. That's really a success for me. Okay. So Yeah, and sometimes you don't even know that you are her, men her mentor. <laughs> and, but they call you her mentor. Yeah, even, right. And you're just basically giving advice and you're mm -hmm. supporting what she's doing right. or developing into. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the biggest piece. Of, of the culture. Recognition. Yeah. But you can't mentor everything, right? And, yeah, I know, uh, yeah. So in your, for, for yourself, I mean, this is really for everybody who's mm -hmm. listening, watching, right? To really understand as well that it takes a lot of introspection to find out what you're good at mentoring and why you do it. So yeah. what are you good at and why? I, I think first and foremost, um, I have the passion mm. of really helping people. I don't know where it came from, but immediately if a person would come to me, um, say something, in my mind, my mind would already start working and think that, hey, why is this person coming to me? Maybe there's something that he wants to uh, learn or he wants to get. And um, so I would probe, you know, um, ask some more questions. And that's when I will find out what is the reason why the person approached me. And um, I would recognize immediately as what you said that sometimes I don't even realize that I am becoming a mentor, but in them, in, in them, in the minds of the mentee, they're thinking that, hey, I could actually come to, you know, Miss Marda and maybe, you know, uh, she can become my, my mentor. Uh, but then after one or two uh, discussions, I would realize I'm already mentoring this person. Yeah. And if that's the case, I would really need to help mm. and I would really need to do it. So yeah. there's a passion, you know, burning yeah. passion. That's really number one. A mentor cannot become a successful mentor if there's no passion in really doing it. So mother, you know, you were talking about passion a lot, right? Yeah. Actually, you forget about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I, I say this because your 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 the people are attracted to you because of your personality oh because of the way you actually open up to embrace and which is a very important ingredient in looking for good mentors and and that's one of the pieces that we all often forget that naturally by chemistry right yep. we get to find mentors who are gems mm -hmm. in the in the ground but what I want to know, what I want to ask you in ending, right, to close this off, is what is one really good gift that you would like to give to all the participants, all the people who are with us today? Uh, what is one thing that you want them to take away that they can use when they engage in a mentoring process to change organizations or even themselves, right, into pieces of gems? 
I think when you go into mentoring, um, one thing that you should have in your mind as a mentor is that how this process would help the mentee and yourself. I mean, it's not really just, you know, um, putting down or uh, give, giving him a lot of uh, things, but it's what you can gain from the process as well. And I think that's the reason why I became very, very, um, uh, I mean, you know, of a believer in this process. And uh, I mean, I became very um, passionate, passionate is the word that I was looking for, uh, in this process is because there are actually lots of things that I had learned, you know. So first and foremost, think of what you could get from the process, because that would really drive the the relationship to get, uh, you know, together successfully. Um, when um, just an example, even though this is the closing, just as an, as an example, when I am actually mentoring a young individual and that that person asks me a lot of questions, sometimes I would envy that person, and I would even think that, hey. During the time when I am, as uh, you know, his age or whatever, I haven't asked that question at all. I learned that, you know, so many years after, and um, that's when I become very uh, interested and think that this person is also an unpolished gem. He has the potential because he has thought of those questions and he has those ambitions. During the time that you know I, I didn't have at that age, you know, I just relied on my bosses. So. I, I think it's really looking for that um, that set of benefits for the mentee and the mentor uh, that should really be there. You know, you should believe in the process itself and uh, seeing that the relationship would work for him and for you. And and key being curious. Thank you so much, Martha. Yeah. Edric, have you got anything to? Come? Yep. Well, you got that camera and that camera. How do people connect with you if they're interested in uh, seeking more <laughs> mentorship advice from you? Yeah. Yeah, you can just contact me. I mean, you know, through the HRFC or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, thank you so, so much. So that being said, um, wherever you get this podcast, like, comment, subscribe, follow <laughs> us. Make sure that uh, you stay on board with us because there's going to be a lot more. At the same time, right? Um, do write into any of us. We'll be happy to write back. We promise. So let us know what you think about this episode and we'll be back again with another episode of mentoring as a culture we'll see thank you, you so much bye bye, bye. bye, -bye.